Good afternoon, everyone. This is another one of my videos. As you all know, I've made a lot of videos over the last several months. And this video is going to be all about instructional technology and different types of instructional technology and how you can use it, use those technologies to enhance the classroom. So I brought in a, a, a special guest today. This is Gail Illich. Um, I am married to Gail, but she also happens to be an outstanding community college uh, professor. Uh, she has been teaching, gosh, how many years have you been teaching at the community college level? At least 20. 20, and most of that, uh, it, certainly over half of that has been fully, pretty much fully online, even though from time to time you'll teach a face-to-face -face course, but most of it's been fully online, and you've been using, you were one of the early adopters of a variety of technologies, including Zoom, and, and Zoom wasn't even known by most people. Um, you were using it. You were also doing other types of more hardware-based um, two-way interactive videos many, many, many years ago. So, Gail, you are here to um, tell us about some wonderful tips and things that you think would be helpful. We have a lot of faculty that are uh, many of them have new laptops and they're getting some opportunities to be prepared to pivot uh, to virtual environments and, and to embrace uh, these technologies, but it can be a little daunting if you're relatively new. So what can you do to help us with this? Okay, I um, thank you for introducing me. I am excited to be on Paul TV. Um, I was wanting to um, yeah, take a minute. Don't Pardon? Make, don't make me tick you off with Paul TV. So you just I know. Just I'm going to take a moment to talk about your strategic plan because okay. I noticed that this was actually finished. You finished it in 2020, so before COVID. But um, I was just looking over the vision statement, and I love this. Uh, the college is dedicated to creating destinations and the highest quality learning climates through permanent, innovative, modern, virtually linked, sustainable, and collaborative facilities and green spaces. So this idea of virtually linked has been in your mission statement, or it was in the strategic plan. So it's been something that you've been working on. And I think it's probably obviously something that's a, ch a challenge because you have so many campuses. So I think it's kind of neat that, that everybody's getting to kind of dig in and, and play with that for a bit. Um, maybe not for always, but for a bit. So uh, some ideas on how you might um, deal with a classroom when you have some students that are remote and some students that are on, on um, campus and you're going to be using maybe your laptop and Zoom. Um, or you might be using a, uh, a computer that's in your classroom and Zoom. So I'm going to, I made a little um, PowerPoint. And I will just pull that up quickly. And I am sort of showing off one of the neatest new things that they have with Zoom is that you can, you can float on your PowerPoint um, and you can move yourself around and it kind of immerses you into the, into the presentation for your students. So this might be something that would be uh, fun to do. Um, so uh, let's kind of just go over some of my tips. So the tips for balancing the classroom. Can I, can I just point out that oh. it's a little distracting, but now I'm getting used to it. At first it was a little distracting to me. How do you think, you, but what I like about it, it feels like you're completely connected to the content. Um, what, what were you distracted by? That your head was floating around. <laughs> well, I mean, I think part of it's supposed to be a little funny. Yeah. Um, and I thought you were going to talk about how I color coordinated my outfit with my PowerPoint. I, I, you know what, I, I just, I wasn't, I, I didn't have that level of fashion detail <laughs> in my brain. I got a few things I'm thinking about as we get ready to open up. The okay, so yeah, some of these ideas might not be things that you would really want to do in your classroom. Maybe you think this is kind of a weird thing, but it's kind of a fun thing and you could let your students play with it too, um, just to get them practicing. No, I think uh, it's cool. I was, just teasing. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so um, I here's some here, here's some tips that I thought about. The first thing, kind of, I just kind of went in level of um, 
kind of complexity, the very first thing you need to do is clearly communicate the link to join the video conference. So however you decide to do that, it needs to be really apparent for the students to click on. Um, if you're intending on having office hours and a classroom, and those are at separate times, they're going to, or separate Zoom links, you're going to really need to come up with a way to communicate that carefully to the students. Um, and before you uh, have your have your class or even after maybe you've had a class, if you practice yourself joining with as many devices, like say you have a phone and say you have an iPad and say you have someone else's computer, just join one meeting and kind of get a sense of all the different ways that you can things content will be presented and people will be portrayed on the different devices. That's a good thing to play. So practicing with all the different devices is, is really a good idea. Um, if you are going to do that, if you're going to have that in your classroom too, you always want to make sure that you leave the computer audio or that you do not join the audio because if you have more than one device in the same vicinity, um, their audio is going to give you a lot of feedback and that can be very distracting. So just you want to watch out for that. Um, I would always require my students to have their cameras on. Um, you, you want them to be engaged. Um, and you also want to explain to the students the importance of a clean background, looking and acting in a professional manner with minimal distractions. And uh, you can kind of say, look, you're practicing a job skill. This is something that you're, you're going to need to be good at in, in the world that we have moving forward. Uh, I think taking time to understand all the different views and how what you're seeing is not necessarily what a participant is seeing and how it's the participant that can control the view. It, it takes a while to kind of process that. So at the first conference, you want to, you probably want to take the time to help the students understand how they're in control. They can do full screen, they can minimize it, you know, push all the buttons, just have a student maybe describe, oh, this is what happened. When I did gallery view, this is what happened. When I did speaker view, this is what happened. The menus, um, they kind of float, you know, and, and they can move around and they can be in the way. And so you want to just talk about that with the students. Um, I really like when you're sharing the screen, when someone's sharing the screen that they use the view side by side mode. So mess around with the view side by side mode and see what I'm what what I mean there, whether you like that or not. That's one of my favorite tips. Um, and the instructor may want to have their device on gallery view if they're looking at the classroom, you know, the Zoom classroom. But the students, if, if the instructor is deciding to use a board and they have the laptop or the, you know, document camera pointed at the board, the students might want to choose speaker view because then they're going to have a bigger view of the, uh, of the classroom and the board. So those are just some tips on the views. And then uh, I would really encourage you to work together to engage. You want to have at least one person, one student maybe join the conference on, in the classroom. So if they have a laptop, they could join the conference and they could um, monitor the chat. And maybe if they see somebody, you know, wave a hand or ask a question, they could help. Um, you could engage the remote students. You want to take a breath when you're teaching. Uh, it, it changes the pace of your teaching when they're not all in the classroom with you. Uh, and so you slow down a little bit and take a minute to engage your remote students by asking them questions. And then you may have to kind of count, you know, one, two, three, because you'll, and let them uh, respond back. Um, yeah. yeah. Can I ask you a question? Just real quick, you know, one of the challenges that um, all of us are facing is, is we're asking not only for the professors to do some of these things that you're talking about, but to do it while you have a, um, a uh, face covering on, a, a, a face mask, or, or right. so someone might have a shield on. Do you have your face mask, mask there? I was just curious what it would sound like. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. And no, I didn't bring it I, with I, me. I think your experience has been... I, yeah, I have gone to a couple of mock classrooms and I, I was concerned that it would be a problem, but it wasn't. It wasn't a, it wasn't a problem. It, it seemed and, to work out. Yeah, especially given with these laptops, especially the new ones, um, they have excellent uh, cameras and excellent mic microphones. And I think they have no problem picking up. Um, right. And I think, I mean, I think as a lot of teachers, we're pretty good at projecting our voices. And so we probably, we're probably kind of loud. <laughs> and so we can get it out there. So, but that would have been a good idea. Well, um, we're not making another cut of this. So <laughs> no, we're good. Okay. Um, so we, uh, so engage your remote students by asking them questions, repeat questions asked 
by the on-campus students for the remote students to hear. So this, this the audio is going to be for the remote students. They will probably likely hear best wherever the cam, wherever the microphone is pointing. So if you have a laptop and you're, you know, projecting to that, they're going to hear you fine, but um, they're not going to hear the other students very well. And so you're going to want to get in the habit of repeating whatever question the students asked in the group, so that you know, so that everybody can benefit from that. And um, you'll find yourself looking at at your uh, you'll find yourself looking at your your classroom students a lot. You may turn around and look at the board a lot, but you you kind of want to get used to looking at the camera, which is what I'm doing right now, um, because that's going to pull your students in that are in the remote uh, in the remote side because they're going to feel like that. If you're kind of just looking off like that, they may feel like that they're not really part of it. And then uh, finally, these are just some more advanced thoughts. Uh, and this, these are things that you can practice as the semester progresses or maybe never, but just kind of fun. You can um, consider joining with two computers in the classroom so that you can project one computer. You put that on the projector and you could share, um, you know, the, the other computer would share the screen. Say you have a PowerPoint, you would choose side by side mode on the projected computer. And what that would do is it would, show the remote students to the face-to-face -face students. So it would bring those students into the classroom. Or you could have the other computer on the gallery view, you know, and just it's a way that you could get the remote students um, in, the, in the classroom, not just on your little laptop, but also project it out. And Gail, at SCC, okay. I think that would be what we call our, our computer audio carts. They all have right. a desktop type computer on them. And yeah. That's the one that you could log in and then join your meeting that's being controlled by probably their laptop. Right. So they right. would then then uh, project to the screen with the desktop and then go to their laptop, and that's where they would be. Right. And I and you, you're you, this is kind of getting uh, nitty gritty here, but you know you might say, well, why not just why not just project your laptop? view up onto the screen. Why are you bringing in another computer? And it's really so that you can engage that side by side mode so that you can see the other students, which you wouldn't get, you can't get as well when you're just projecting your laptop. So it's just a little bit of, I think, a cool way to do it. It's also really interesting is if you're teaching math and you're writing on your, um, you're, you're writing on like a, a tablet, the, to be able to see what the remote students are seeing as it comes up is very comforting. So that's it. Once you get it set up, it, it really does kind of work well. Um, you want to have all the students. Oh, uh, yeah. If you had all the students join the conference, um, so they could like your in class students, maybe if they have a laptop or they could join just with their phone, then the polling feature in zoom is really interesting and you can get you can you can do quiz questions you could do how are you feeling questions you and you can prep those questions ahead of time and just pull them up and that can be a nice kind of little break and it also can give you a sense of where the class is and how they're feeling how do they so, get that so that they have access to the polling well um that would just be a setting within their uh, within zoom they turn the polling on and then in the meeting like if they're always using the same meeting um, they can go into, and this would be on the um, on the web client in their in their account on the web client. They would click on the meeting, and they could edit it, and then they could add um, add polls. And you can actually add like they can, there are ten questions at a time, I think, and you can add up to twenty five polls. So you could just pull them. You can also create polls on the fly, but um, that that can be a little. So it just depends. Maybe you set students into a breakout room, and then you and then you add the polls. Um, but these are, of course, advanced thoughts, maybe not something you want to try the first week. Um, it's kind of fun. I don't know if you've ever worked with a Google Doc, but Google Docs seem, and you share them, they are very responsive. Like people can type all at the same time all over, you know, all over the country, you know, and a little bit faster than my experience with, with a shared Word Doc. So, um, having a shared Google Doc and then you could have the students, maybe you could assign note taking responsibilities or, or different things. So then they would all have the same document and they would all be you know, doing, doing something at the same time, but they wouldn't necessarily be in the same place. So, and then you could share the Google Doc and talk about what people are doing. Um, you can create, um, this is something I'm gonna try, which would be to create a shared Excel workbook 
and um, with and then on the sheets I'm going to put each student's name and then I'll give a task like maybe practice creating some sort of graph and the students will do they'll go into that shared shared workbook they'll go onto their tab and they'll do the work in, in their sheet and then you would be able to um, you know I guess you could just assess it you could grade it right there or you could also have the students you could share that workbook and then you could have the students talk to present their work you mean so you wouldn't they wouldn't have to be worrying about sharing their screen or anything like that so i think that would be um, a fun thing to do um quizlet and padlet and there's other learning apps that can you can draw the students in and to maybe if you have to kind of do some some sort of drill skill and drill type type um, activities and then uh, i would just want people to remember that technology i've always just thought of technology as a tool for creativity and the way that you get good at it is just by practicing with it and being, you know, open minded, asking questions and really empowering your students to give you suggestions and to have fun. Well, Gail, this has been um, really wonderful. And I thank you for taking some time with us. I, you know, me, I, I can't let you have too much to say without me having a couple things to say. And I, oh, I'm sorry. Doing, no, 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 it's good. I'm doing a president's update. And you know what I'm really excited about, and I, I don't know how it happened, but it, but it happened to me over the last couple of days. I've got that same feeling that I always get when the fall starts and it's exciting and, and I've been able to see students coming onto our campuses, parents, they're excited. Yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but it hasn't, it hasn't damp, dampened that it, it's excitement. And I think some of that, could be blended with the anxieties that we have. And I'm, I'm kind of choosing to uh, label what might actually be an anxiety about, you know, what we're doing here um, in this pandemic, but I'm, I'm, I'm uh, choosing to label it as really excitement for the beginning of a journey. And I think these technology um, ideas that you have uh, just builds on that excitement. We're going to learn new things. It, you know, some of the things that you've described I've been able to do in board meetings uh, with my board members and, and, you know, at first it was a little scary for them, but now they're really picking up on it and enjoying it. What, what kind of um, maybe a last minute thought do you have on uh, you know, what makes you excited about the start of the fall semester and, and, um, and maybe from the perspective of someone that's doing that uh possibly i mean fully online or no matter how you start it what what do you think about when you start a fall semester well I, I think the the best thing about being a teacher is you get to start and finish things you know and that and it's so so exciting to come to the start and you know you know you're going to meet new students and they're going to you're going to take them on a journey and it's going to be a different journey but you're going to help them for for um probably the well, the first time in my experience, you're really giving them some life skills, not just math skills and not just history skills or not just that, but these are really life skills on, on um, how we can get through this together and be uh, safe and, and, um, and still do some learning. So I think it's, I think educators have always been pushing this ways to get to be accessible and to be there for students and to get that communication. We've always tried to do that and we're just getting it a really good dose of, of practicing it. So Gail, you and I both have taught statistics for many, many years, and I, I've probably taught a more applied version of statistics. Do you happen to have access to a tablet or something where you could draw on your screen? Um, well, I can just use the, the deck, yeah. Okay. Do you want me to draw well, on the screen? Yeah, put it on the screen. I, I'd like for people to see, um, just can you quickly kind of explain the idea of uh, this notion of the probability of significant testing, P less than 0.05. And we, over the years, uh, the use of confidence intervals to help understand um, your data is really important. So you're talking about a p-value? Well, or? I'm talking about both p-value and confidence interval. Let's keep it the p-value because, it, so what does that notation look like? Well, um, a p-value is just a, you know, it's a probability that your uh, data supports your null hypothesis or is consistent with your null hypothesis. Right, so if you made a hypothesis 
uh, one time to me on a run. We were running. And the hypothesis was that we were so lucky that we found the one, each other found the one. Yeah. And um, I kind of challenged that hypothesis. I said, I think the probability of that actually being true is really, really small. But you certainly are within my 95% confidence. And we'll yeah, see. so you, there, are, you're, there, are, there are other options. That's what you're saying, but I was- I'm not thing. saying there are other options. I'm just saying the probability, you know, that I was the one seemed <laughs> really difficult. So I just wanted to bring that up because I think um, it's important for people to know that life is about probabilities and uh, <laughs> Precision is a wonderful thing. I, I think I'm digging a hole here. I think you. Yeah, no. Well, I think. I mean, I think you I, I I think what you're saying here is that statistics is really about variation and yeah. dealing with all of these different variables that we're going to have. Yes. You know, is is very much a, we've got to be open to making errors. But I don't think that you're saying that you particularly made an error with me. No. <laughs> No, not at all. I, but I what you're saying is that maybe it's not reasonable to think that it's going to be perfect. You're going to get an exact. I would even go for exactly right. Ninety-five percent confidence. I would even put you in the ninety-nine percent. No doubt. That I'm in an, in the nine. Well, the ninety-nine percent confidence. Or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually that you make an excellent point that um, when I teach statistics, that's the thing I start and kind of finish on is this whole idea that what we're trying to do is understand the variation in the data. And often we, we like to make, it's just natural, the human thing to do is to make claims about data and without really thinking about it, sometimes we might be missing what's called a latent variable or things that are hidden and we just can't see. So this is the kind of a really a great example of what we're going through with COVID is this is a lot of complexity that we're just trying to all navigate. But you have done a wonderful job, excellent um, guest for us today, and I think you I think you've added to the value of, of Paul TV. I <laughs> I really do. Anything else you'd like to say to everyone at SCC before we wrap this well, up? Well, I'm just wishing you all a, a great semester, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing about all the things that are going on at SCC. It's fun. All right. Thanks, Carol. Appreciate the time, everybody. Okay. Take care.